Roberts, that's our word, brought to you by Room for Freedom, uh, which is Ben Stone's new uh, project, um, speaking of which, uh, we're here with the bad Quaker himself, Ben Stone, how are you doing, man? <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, Jim, it's, it's good to a, talk to you, it's yeah. been a while since we talked, oh yeah, you stole yeah. your line. Yeah, <laughs> last time we talked, we were on The Fiends, I think we were talking about, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we were talking about Hiroshima, weren't we? Yeah. That sounds very likely. Yeah, because yeah, it was about around June or something like mm-hmm. that. So it, that's very likely. I think I did two shows with you. One with one with just you and me, and then one with Lou. And I don't remember which one came yeah. first. But um, yeah, I know that they were both fun. Um, just to kind of like show like our listeners like how humble Ben is. Like I've always kind of looked up to Ben. Always. Uh, I never actually had the opportunity to talk with him ever. <laughs> And the first time I hopped on to Fiend Phone getting ready to do a show, before I could even say anything, he was like, oh, Jim Jesus, it's great to finally talk, talk to you with you. It's, it's an honor to speak with you finally. And I'm like, fuck you, <laughs> you're Ben Stone. <laughs> like, I'm, that's my line, <laughs> speaking of stealing lines. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, and this guy's awesome. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> So you've done a couple of things since your retirement from podcasting, which was a great podcast. You can go and view the archives at Ben, was it Benstone.com, The Bad Quaker? What is it? Um, I was just, just right BadQuaker.com. Okay. Yeah, BadQuaker.com. Yeah, is it going to be up for a while or? Yeah, um, it's kind of permanently hosted and then permanently backed up over at um, um, Art of Not Being Governed, too. Okay. So it, uh, and it's on the, uh, the torrents, so it's going to be around. Okay, good, good. So, yeah, you can always look up for it there just in case the site ever goes down in the future. We don't know. But you have uh, two projects. I know one you're willing to talk about. I'm not exactly sure if you're willing to talk about the other one, <laughs> if you're willing to put your name on that one particularly. So we'll talk about the one that you do have your name on first. We'll talk about uh, Room for Freedom. I think I had Jeremy on, who was a member of your team. I don't know if he still is, and he got the opportunity to talk about it. But we want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, or the Quaker's mouth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've we've gone through some some changes in the last couple of weeks. Um, I think there was uh, some serious. I'm going to try and not bash as much as possible, but You're I want to be truthful podcast. and. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, you're sometimes right. it's impossible. Sometimes yeah. it's impossible to be truthful and not point out, you know, serious mistakes that somebody has made. Mm-hmm. So, um, so there were some real serious mistakes. Like we started out uh, with one name, and um, and then it went to a different name and a different website. So we had the first website, then we had a second website, and then there was the decision that both of those two names were unacceptable, and so we went with the third name, which is Room for Freedom. Okay. And so we had the third website that we had to grab. And so all told, we have four we own four websites that are all pointing back to Room for Freedom because uh, in the very beginning of this, the person running it didn't bother to sit down and Google and see if anybody else was using any of the names that were being proposed, which, you know, when you start a business, that's step one. Step one is decide, you know, is anybody else using this name? What are they doing with it? It, Can I, can I use, can I find a name that nobody is using and then grab it and, you know, uh, and market that name. Yeah. So that was a mistake. Mistake number two was um, uh, bringing on a really nice guy who is a really good person as the primary programmer that spent the last three months and didn't write a single line of code. Mm. Um, now, all that time, the guy running the show was portraying to everyone that the code was being written and that we would have the software by May and then later on by June and then later by July. Um, but he knew the whole time that not one uh, line of code had been written. He knew this, and he did not allow the rest of us to know that. Mm. Now, that really sounds bad. In addition to that, the person running the program um, set up an Indiegogo campaign, first off with the wrong name, then without links, without the correct links and so forth, and ended up pulling in. He was trying to get over $20,000. And basically selling vaporware. There was no, there was nothing to sell. We had nothing. There was not a single line of code, mm. again, not written. So this sounds really scammy. This sounds like something 
that a seasoned scammer would do to bring on somebody like me who has a little bit of an internet presence and people kind of know my name and they know that I'm not dishonest and they know that I, I reject the, the legendary con men that are out there, you know, feeding off of the, the Liberty community. Hopefully we can get into some so, of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he brought me in and essentially gave me the job of go out and and be on podcasts and advertise this. So I did that. I went with Gusto because that's, you know, that's kind of that's right in my wheelhouse. That's what I can do. The whole time I was being told that it was being written, that the code was being written. So I'm selling it as that. And as it turns out, uh, I'm selling vaporware too and attempting to raise $20,000 I thought to pay the programmer when it turns out he had decided or he had agreed to do it for free and then get paid later on. Um, so all these layers of deception indicate like really, really boldly that there's a scam. The problem is if it was a scam, it was run really amateurishly and it failed horribly. It, it ended up raising something like five or seven hundred dollars, something like that, instead of twenty thousand. And um, additionally to that, the same person who was running it uh, brought in a, a person who was supposed to be the PR and uh, the Internet specialist and the person who was going to take this to social media. And he's going to set up a Twitter account. And he's going to set up a, a YouTube account. And he's going to set up a, uh, a, a Facebook account. And he's going to start doing videos. And, he's gonna, and he didn't do any of those things. Um, so I reached out. I, I brought in a graphic artist. And the guy who was running the thing shoots down the graphic artist and kicks him out. Okay. So I had brought in Derek Slopey as sort of my backup coding guy because Derek is like a computer genius. From Agri and so Derek started. And yeah. If he yeah. also does Fiend Phone, he also did Meow Bit and a few other projects for Michael Dean. So, yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Derek comes in and he's like, uh, Can I see the coding? And it's like, mar, 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 mar. well, how about now? Can I see the coding? Ah, rah. And then finally, Derek's like, look, I, I'd, I'd really like to see the coding. And the guy who was sort of in charge of the whole thing kind of just snaps at Derek and says, you know, the, the coding guy works for me. He doesn't work for you. Oh, he does what I say. Yeah, that's and a huge right about flag. This, <laughs> Yeah, I w it was really troubling to me. And right about the same time, I had also brought in a really stable member of our community who could have single-handedly financed the entire thing out of his checkbook and not even, you know, not even blinked an eye. But I kind of had him in reserve, and I was kind of telling him, don't get too much into this. We're, I'm starting to see some red flags here. So he was present, but he wasn't invested. He was just watching. Mm -hmm. And I also reached out to Roger Ver, who is a great guy, and I had a, a an appointment set up to talk to him on Skype, and we were going to go over all these details. But then he went, looked at the website, looked at the Indiegogo campaign, looked at the names involved, and very, very politely and respectfully said, I'm not touching that. <laughs> mm. So then the guy who was the leader of this whole thing, sends out an email to like five of his other friends that are not even involved in this, but are some of them are fairly well-known people in the Liberty community and slanders both my friend who was the investor who was coming into this and Roger Veer and makes accusations uh, about them um, in this email. And it's like, all right, that's it. Now, now we're going into the realm of complete unprofessional behavior, slandering people because they won't finance your project. So this is over. So I came in, I grabbed, uh, grabbed my daughter, told her what was going on, said, you know, do you want in on this? And so she swooped in, she set up an LLC, took control of the thing completely legally, and now she is the CEO of Room for Freedom LLC. Um, and it's all her decisions, and the guy who was in control of it, of it before is out completely. This all happened in a matter of one day. He had no idea it was coming. It, was, it could be said that it was really scummy of me to do that to him, that I didn't give him any warning. But 
it's also, you know, I've seen so many times where somebody has admin capability on a website. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. if you don't get that out of their hands really fast and they have a little temper tantrum, they can do incredible amounts of damage. Yeah. And this person's going to go without naming, but I know that Jeremy was also involved in Room for Freedom and he was telling me that this particular individual who will rename uh, nameless was telling him like if I had my druthers I'd be kicking you out right away. And it's like all I do is just provide input. Like <laughs> this is not <laughs> like if, if my input is offending you then that's 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 telling you something is wrong with with everything with the whole system. <laughs> like right. Know, yeah. Cuz my job was to criticize things and for you to go that's that's true. Let's see if we can fix that cuz that was his pretty much his job from what I recollect him telling me, so, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh and I'll and I'll say it like this too because I don't want to I don't want to be somebody who just talks behind uh, somebody's back and won't mm -hmm. say something to their face. Um, so this whole thing took place, and it 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 could easily look like I'm the bad guy who used the state government to you know to yank this business out of his hands. Um, yeah, and and okay, that's true. So that happened, um, but. I believe that it's all right to use things like, uh, um, you know, incorporating a business to protect it from somebody who is going to use other means to attack it and take it away or destroy it or whatever anyway. So to me, it's exactly like using the roads. Look, I don't want to pay taxes, and uh, it, but, I, but I do. I have to. They, they will find a way to get the taxes from me one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And they use those, among other things, to build the roads. So I don't think there's anything morally wrong with using the roads because that's uh, post facto after I've been robbed. Yeah. It's not It's not like, you know, I didn't rob anybody to build the roads. I got robbed. So now I'm going to use the road. Yeah, I, I think there's – And like, I think – Well, I'm oh, oh, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say, like, the, I think there's a common misconception that the whole corporation thing and the limited liability, that's a, that's a, state, ex, that's a state thing. But I don't think there's any reason to believe that that would not be the case uh, in a in a in a polycentral legal order. I think there would be limited liability and all that stuff too. I think it would just be handled differently. But since we live in this state, yeah, I can understand why you would need to uh, reach out for that for that kind of legal protection. You know, it's it's either, it's kind of like you have to patent something because if you don't patent it, then you'll lose it. You know, <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah, someone yeah. will patent it and take it out from underneath you. But yeah. So sorry. Go yeah, on. they'll use that process against you, and that's that's why we went to LLC and and uh, uh, went that process with it, uh, and we did do it fast. We did s scream and quickly cut him out of all the admin, and and so let me just say, it looks in every way from an outside observer like this was a scam from the beginning, but I don't actually think it was. I think it's just a series of really bad business decisions by somebody who has never successfully set up a business from scratch. He has always come in at a different level or whatever. He's never carried the, the bucket himself. And in addition to that, there's, um, uh, there's a, a, a website called How to Spot Psycho Psychopathy. And it, uh, it states a 1941 study that produced 16 key behavioral characteristics that, de that define a sociopath. And this guy hits 11 of them solid and maybe a 12th one of, of the 16. The newer test is like a 40-point test, and I would have to really get into a depth with that to get a, a, a score on the modern test. But, um, but either way, I think that is thought. what happened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really think that it was not an intentional scam. I think it was just gross incompetence on the part of Jim Davidson. And it's my fault because, like, everybody um, of, a, of a super high level of respect that I talked to said, do not go into business with Jim Davidson. This is, you know, people, uh, I don't know if I should name all these people or not, but people like Michael Dean and Angela Keaton um, you know, Mama Liberty and, and a lot more than that, people that I have a real super high level of respect, of respect for said, do not go into business with this guy. And I should have taken their, their advice. Um, but you know, I didn't. So in that sense, it is my fault. Uh, but the one thing you'll never hear from Jim is this was my fault because that's a part of sociop sociopathy. They will not admit to doing anything wrong ever. Yep. And I'm fully happy to admit that I was wrong when, <laughs> when I'm wrong on things. 
<laughs> like I've I've said it a million times. Like I'm wrong. I was wrong. I'm I'm completely out of the election prediction market. Like I thought that Hillary had it in the bag, <laughs> way yeah. off. Uh, and I, I thought that Le Pen was going to win the, the election in France. Like, I was like, ooh, this is not good. She's going to win. <laughs> it's not good if a socialist wins either. I mean, it's all bad, you know. Right, But right. then she lost. But I was smart enough this time not to say it publicly. <laughs> so <laughs> if you ever are in the betting market for elections, like if you ever want to bet on elections, ask me and then vote against whatever I say <laughs> to pretend <laughs> that the opposite is true. Um, I also said Gary Johnson was going to get 5%. How did that work out? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I didn't expect it. What, what, we, <laughs> yeah. what we didn't expect was Ron Paul would get an electoral vote out of it. <laughs> and Gary Johnson didn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. So Oh man. So I really uh, do I hope should this... clarify. Oh, go ahead. Go go ahead. Go I ahead. was gonna say that like I really do hope this works out because I like the idea. And I do like the fact that I can use Airbnb and then use like something like Bitcoin. Like I'm, I'm more in Monero right now. Like that's that's my that's that's my favorite coin right now. <laughs> but you mm -hmm. know the fact that I could use Bitcoin or I could you know pay in gold and silver, or even rent out my couch for some gold and silver. You know if I need to, and uh, you know not have to go through BNB's kind of stringent uh, policies or whatever. You know it, it'll be out there. Like look, this is just I, I just got a futon. <laughs> you know and. <laughs> You know, I have a cat, so if you have allergies or, or a bad back, you know, forget it. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. if you absolutely need to, you know, hey, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so we do we do own the name. Um, well, I shouldn't say we because I'm not actually uh, an – I'm not an employee of the corporation. Pocket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but Room for Freedom LLC owns the website Room for Freedom, and uh, Room for Freedom LLC – is pushing ahead and uh, contacting um, programmers, and they're and and it's they're going to make sure that this happens. It may take a while, um, but they're not. Uh, Room for Freedom is not accepting donations uh, of any kind from anyone, okay. even though there is still Indiegogo campaigns attempting to collect money <laughs> for the project. Uh, they don't actually have any control over the website room for freedom so okay. uh even even though they still point at it and would still accept money for it so if you know here's like a test if if indiegogo if the indiegogo campaign continues trying to get money for a program that they're not a part of then that would be a pretty good indication that the person running the indiegogo campaign which his name is right there on the front page of it mm -hmm actually is scamming people okay. but i really don't think he is i i think this was just gross imp incompetence on the part of jim davidson and i shouldn't have trusted him to begin with i should have taken smart people's advice but i didn't so yeah. um but i think it's still going to happen i think because i think the overall idea is really good just to not be a middleman just to make the connection and then to not have any record of uh, you know of where the people travel or who comes to their house or whatever. I think it's you know there are a lot of businesses that are safe and um, you know that that are private businesses that people do that are not necessarily approved of by governments. Mm -hmm. And those people need a way to connect with each other. And I think that's the that's a very large part of the market we're going to touch with that. Yep. I hope it all works out. And in hobo symbols, that website still points to yours, not the other one. It it does currently. Uh, when we get all this straightened out, uh, hobo symbols will probably go back to its original owner, which was the programmer uh, from the beginning. Okay. He's a great guy, and I wouldn't I wouldn't ever want to take anything from him, okay. you know, uh, uh, unrightfully. So eventually, hobo symbols will go back to own, to his ownership. Um, it's a it's a cool name for a site though, yeah. you know, and a cool concept. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, you want to you want to say the link to, to to correct it, and I'll I'll make a note of it from now on. I should probably go back and uh, edit some of the links out too. But go ahead. What's the web? The web yeah, site? it's it's room the number four freedom okay. dot com. All right. And um, yep. I, I didn't I, I didn't ask. <laughs> I didn't, should have asked you before we started recording, but there was a book out that allegedly you may have had some something to do with. Uh, it doesn't have your name on it. I have like three copies of it. I, I, by the way, 
that contest that I that I that I've been talking about, uh, leave a comment on iTunes. Um, and I guess yeah. Bab has made it, so it's like any any star comment, uh, z- zero to a hundred, whatever <laughs> stars you want to give us, or none. Uh, the funniest one wins. I'll throw a, a copy of your book in. Is that if that's okay with you? Oh, cool. Or, or yeah, the, the yeah. book that allegedly you wrote. I don't know if it's true or not. Um, <laughs> but I definitely thoroughly condemn it. I had just finished reading it. I started reading it when I first got it, and I just been kind of swamped with other things. And then I had the opportunity to read it again before you came on. And man, wow, that book is. Um, uh, entertaining and uh, definitely something I don't <laughs> condone, but I'm kind of I guess I'm sort of doing <laughs> at least not the not the underground part. I'm definitely not involved in actual sabotage, but um, so yeah, you, allegedly, we, yeah, allegedly. So this book that allegedly you wrote, um, what is the kind of the, the main kind of the scorpion kind of thing that you were talking about? Um, there was like a couple of aspects about you know the above ground and the below ground. Yeah, do you want to? cover that yeah so the book is in three parts mm-hmm. um and that's the uh, the three-part solution to the state is explained in in those three parts one one for each part um in the and and i will go Which ahead and take credit sabotage credit. and sedition a field manual volume one correct I have my copy. right okay. yeah <laughs> sedition sab, sub, sedition subversion and sabotage field manual number one a three-part solution to the state okay so so I wrote the entire first section, um, other than Allegedly. like pieces that I quote from other people. <laughs> no. uh, but the whole first section is mine, um, other than quotes. And um, the second section is uh, I took the f- a field manual from the OSS, and I think it's called something like um, Subversion and Sabotage, field manual number one from the OSS, from like 1945 or 1947 or something like that. And I lifted most of that straight word for word, just copy and paste uh, into um, into the book. Mm-hmm. And then I went through and just sort of expanded on their concepts. And I took out some of the more dated aspects uh, of of what they had put in there. And I and I kind of updated it a little bit. But essentially, the whole second section is a is basically a, an updated version of the 1947 OSS and the OSS later became the CIA so that's that kind of gives you the idea okay. um, except like towards the end of that section there's some stuff in there that I that I just used the OSS's um, formula and then applied it to modern day things like I talked about the um, um, oh what were those called um, Oh, the uh, the light bright type things in uh, the I think it was in Boston. The Moonlight con- 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 yeah, yeah. where the uh, I yeah. guess the Adult Swim had tried to do like a PR stunt where they put those uh, light brights with the Moon Knight characters from was it Aquatine Hunger Force? And yeah, I remember yeah. it vividly now. <laughs> and they put it up as, as a fits on. <laughs> Everybody knew what it was except for the government, <laughs> and they they thought it was like they thought they were bombs. <laughs> And uh, the best part was when they did the um, the press conferences afterwards. Instead of like answering their questions, they just kept talking about haircuts from the seventies. Yeah, those guys are awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was really that was a good stunt. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, so I, I put references I put references to that and a couple other things. The a thing uh, James Randi did in in Australia that was just beautiful. Oh, I just Carlos. I love that stunt that he did. Yeah, the yeah. Carlos hoax. That was that was classic. Yes. And we're actually, you know, Fortran did a kind of a thing like what I was talking about. I'm I'm not trying to take credit for it. Fortran, that's what I meant. (laughs) What did I say? You said uh, Fortran. (laughs) That might be a little different. Yeah, I was like, (laughs) we're going to be programming in Cobalt next for the... (laughs) (laughs) But uh, but they did a thing with the the OK symbol. Are you, do you know about this story? Yeah, the uh, we talked about it in the last episode. You know, the OK symbol. Yeah. Like, yeah, everything's OK. You know, the index finger and thumb and the three fingers. Yeah, that's, that's right. a symbol As for a white power. supremacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're awesome trolls. Allegedly. Yeah. I got my app too. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I, I think things like that are just really great. It's a great way to humiliate the the mainstream media. It's a great way to you know keep them busy and 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 do to them what they do to us. You know the mainstream media essentially um, constantly deflects people's attention from the evils of government, and um, 
by by just feeding us crap all the time that's not important like who cares what that celebrity did or whatever but if we can do that back to them and we can feed them fake stories and fake information and you know we can it's much easier for the above ground to mock them when the underground is feeding them garbage mm -hmm. <laughs> like the, my uh, fake news the stories third part, <laughs> but that's, yeah that falls exactly. in the line of parody because what i'm usually doing is i'm kind of end up mocking a lot of statists a lot, a lot of fellow celebra uh, celebritarians. Well, I'm not. A fe I'm not a fellow celebritarian. God help me if that ever happens. <laughs> uh, uh, but the media as well. Like I have a, I have one that I'm doing. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up. I'll put. I post a note so you can kind of get a glimpse of what I'm doing next. Uh, um, I guess Newsweek did a story where they were talking about there's life on a, on a moon on uh, uh, one of the moons of Saturn. But if you actually look into <laughs> what's going on, it's there's no life. There's no signs of life. They just found out that the conditions are right for life. And so right. everybody's giving crap to Newsweek for it. So um, I was going to do a news st Newsweek story that a man got laid, but it doesn't ever say that he got laid. It's just that, you know, he got her number <laughs> and everything went really well. And he dropped off at home, <laughs> but she just gave him a kiss and he left. <laughs> but yeah, it was kind of, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, but that's 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 exactly what you were talking about, just kind of lampooning the media and making them making people question the media, which I thought was I was like, that's what I do. This is brilliant. I love this yeah. book. Yeah. Uh, actually I condemn it. What um, am I saying? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the third part of the book is uh essentially notes that I took from meeting with people in mostly in Missouri, and uh, we we traveled through um, Missouri and Arkansas, down into Mississippi and Louisiana, and then over to Alabama. And it's essentially a series of notes from people that I spoke to uh, in those areas that were um, pretty hardcore, radical, mostly right wing biker. Um, um, what do you call the? Uh, uh, militia types and and that kind of thing that I met with because they already pretty much possess um, the capability to have uh, vigilante squads and to a certain extent they self-police with those already and so that's somebody I wanted to talk to and f kind of find out how they do it what they would do if the state if the state wasn't around and how they would conduct business so to speak mm -hmm. and um, and so that's what the third part is. It's it's essentially a collection of the notes from talking to those guys. And some of those guys were, you know, I've in my life I've been around some pretty hard people, and uh, some of those guys are they're amazingly tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> not to the say kind the of least. people you want upset with you. I think I think everybody knows the story of not to mess with bikers. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think that's. I think we all read Hell's Angels, but yeah. <laughs> But they're also Very some bad. of the freest people uh, in, in, you know, in North America mm -hmm. because they just act free. They just do what they want, and, and they, don't, uh, they tend to respect each other's borders, each other's uh, boundaries, and uh, in doing so, they, they kind of have their own little civilization. Mm -hmm. Just don't knock over their bikes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or to look right at their eyes. Yeah, you, you can dance on the table and, and do tequila. That's fine, but yeah, just don't just don't knock over their bodies. That's bad news. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. The, the book also talks about actual like maybe disabling cop cars or you know like <laughs> super gluing their um, windshield wipers, which I, I thoroughly condemn. But one of the things they talked about like how because how how you have it or how it, the book uh, has it set up is that there's basically kind of like the underground and the above ground uh, activists, which was the underground would we go out and doing sedition, producing fake news stories, creating rumors and stuff like that. And then when it comes to light by the media, like look at what these terrible anarchists are doing. And then the people who are above ground, like someone like me would say like, Oh, that's a conspiracy theory. Like there's no evidence to support this, you know, doing kind of the, a lot of the things that they do. when we ever talk about stuff that they do. Right. Uh, or producing parody yeah. to, to mock it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is with the with, uh, the comparison to the scorpion. So you have these two pincers, these mm -hmm. two big giant claws. And I know and, about scorpions. And, oh, do I know about scorpions? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been stung like four yeah, times you, in my own apartment. It's not fun. 
you have probably the the fire scorpions there, don't you? The little uh, the little light colored, sort of yellowish. Yeah, they're the bark the bark ones. They're the most poisonous. Ah. They're the most poisonous scorpion in North America, which is not saying much because it's basically all that happens is like it feels like someone put a cigarette out on you and you're kind of lightheaded for a couple yeah. of hours. Yeah, it, there's actually like a yeah, euphoria yeah. to it. It's really weird. It's not worth the sting, <laughs> but it's there. And there's no markings, which I really do. Oh, I appreciate. Thank you, Scorpion, for stinging me but not leaving a mark. And what I found is it almost doesn't matter how big or small they are. Mm -hmm. They all have that same effect, even the little ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so the Scorpion has got uh, these two weapons That's right on the I front really of its like body. The cover. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw the cover, I was like, oh, I hate those things. Destroy it. Yeah. Sorry. Tear it off. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure I interrupt. Tell me how you escape. <laughs> um, so, so, uh, so they, so they badger. They don't actually use the, those claws to kill their opponent. They just badger it, and they badger it, and they badger it until they get it completely overwhelmed. And at the right moment, then they just bring that stinger in from a, a from above, and just slide it right into their victim, and bang! It's and now they just devour the thing, you know. Um, because if you look close enough at their mouth, their mouth is like a series of claws. It's not actually like it's not jaws. It's it's like kind of like the uh, the mouth on the uh, the alien on uh, <laughs> uh, no predator the predator yeah. yeah. I was like alien anyway. would have like another scorpion coming out of its mouth. That would have been like, yeah. <laughs> um, the two little pincers. But, yeah. So the book is kind of portraying like the the above ground is like one of those pinchers, and the uh, and the underground is like the another one of those pinchers, and they're just badgering the state back and forth from side to side. But then the third part of the solution is the third part of the book, where you have uh, select, targeted, precision strikes that finish. The, you know, so so I'm being careful how I say this, and it might be better just read the second. You can get a free copy of it in PDF from BadQuaker.com, or you can get an audio version of it. Which, so which it is might what be I listen better to. to. And just, just a quick note on that: the Travis part reading it is the best part. It's the best when Travis <laughs> is reading it. It's the best. Macfeen, yeah, he he memes it a little bit. It's great. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. terrible with that. No, he does. Yeah. It, it, it's it's really good. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's, you know, uh, I mean, you can pay for a, a paperback copy at badquaker.com if you want to, but there's the audio version, which is really handy, and the uh, PDF version, um, which is easy to erase in case of emergency. <laughs> and everybody should uh, um, loudly condemn the book and say what it is it's really bad humor it's a it's a pathetic attempt at humor it's not very funny and nobody should read it and then you should give it to somebody else who can read it as a professional stra uh, satirist somewhat somewhat professional <laughs> semi professional <laughs> satirist it's horrible satire and parody Go ahead. <laughs> but I, i'm yeah i'm giving away a copy of it for free so yeah you should, you should definitely read it on top of that. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm terrible at this. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> oh man, that's okay. It wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be a good Lulberts if yeah. we didn't mock some of the uh, <laughs> some of the sacred cows of liberty. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so you were going to I read. saw a picture. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. oh no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a picture on uh, Twitter the other day of uh, uh, it was a picture of a of a Nazi that they had superimposed Molyneux's face into. <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious. And then immediately, you know, you have, wait a minute. What is this? Why are you? How can you say these things? <laughs> they, it's like they come out of the woodwork, you know? Oh, yeah. They're looking for it. I, I think they actually look for, like, in backwards image searching. I think that that's what they're doing, constantly looking for stuff and then going after it. Man, these people are. Yeah. 
Yeah. Amazing. There is a uh, cart, uh, a comic that's really good, and it kind of looks like a Victorian kind of era. And then someone's like, man, I really don't like sea otters. And he was like, no, wait, don't say that. And then like a sea otter comes up behind them. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't appreciate your opinion. Would you care to back up your claim? <laughs> and he's like, oh, go away. And he's like, well, you did make a public statement, and I think you should back it up, <laughs> at, least, at least debate it publicly, <laughs> if you have the nerve to say it. <laughs> and they're like, just go uh, away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> L. Ron Schulman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I enjoy that, though. <laughs> I enjoy his reactions. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, so, anyways, the, this, I think you were going to read something or. Oh, I don't know. I think we got distracted. Oh, <laughs> yeah, from, from the precision strike. Oh, I could. Yeah, yeah. The uh, uh, well, let me do this. I'll read the the four conventional strategies. There's a whole section in the first part of the book that goes one by one through the four conventional strategies. Okay. And the funny thing is, when I I had written this this whole section of the book about the four conventional strategies, and um and I was on in a whole different part of this. This was like uh, 2015, I think. And um, um, Tom Woods had uh, Bob Murphy on his show. And they were talking about the four conventional strategies. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait a minute. Are they looking at my notes? How did they get my notes? <laughs> but <laughs> but the, uh, there's actually, I propose a fifth strategy in the book. So, but the four conventional strategies are one, the political means, two, civil disobedience, three, speaking truth for posterity, and four, agorism. And then, uh, and then I add a fifth strategy to the book that you'll have to read it to find out. But um, the one thing that I wanted to emphasize in the first section of the book was that sedition, subversion, and sabotage is not the primary purpose or should not be the primary purpose of anybody seeking freedom and liberty. Um, the seven part job that I list in there is provide for yourself and your family, strive for consistent principled behavior in your own life, prepare for the systematic failure of the state, beans, band-aids, Bitcoin, bullion, and bullets, help those whom you can help and let go of those who you cannot help. Expose the evil, li evil and lies of the state as you speak the truth in the face of power. Publicly disassociate yourself from the underground and denounce all active acts of aggression. And safely engage in direct activism like filming the police, podcasting, or other activities, or, or quietly providing support for those who do. Mm -hmm. So that's the seven-part job. Um, doing the other things that I say in the book don't fall within that realm and you shouldn't do them. <laughs> okay. And and I have publicly denounced the underground. Terrible, horrible people. By the way, let me know what I should be parroting, guys. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, there was there was a there was a lot of things in that book, and there was a lot of jabs on Molyneux, which I I, I giggled at every single. And it's funny because I was listening to it at work, <laughs> and every time it's like it's like you don't listen to this Canadian philosopher that tells you to, <laughs> to get rid of your family. I'm just like, <laughs> like what are you listening to? Nothing. Like I really didn't want to have that conversation at work. Like, oh yeah, I'm listening to a book on how to overthrow the government. <laughs> how are you doing? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is a little little hard to explain to people in a social setting like that. Yeah, <laughs> but be fun to try. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because a lot of the people that I work with are a lot of Trump voters. Like the, the Philippines, would you know, <laughs> the Philippines are really big mm -hmm. on nationalism, huge on nationalism. Just look at their new president. You know. <sighs> but yeah, wow, yeah. That's strange because the Philippines were like – they were abused on a grand scale by the United States military. It's weird that they would have anything but but a hatred towards the United States government. Yeah. But there's a lot of them that come that would be like and send money back to their family. Yeah, they're, they're really yeah. good on that. It's all, they all go into nursing, which is weird, but yeah. <laughs> that would that would be like someone who is uh, uh you know in the Sioux Nation 
that would embrace American nationalism. Yeah. It just kind of seems strange to me. Yeah, you, you'd think the United States would be really big against uh, tyrannical states, but here we are. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> the whole history of the United States was you know getting away from a tyrannical government. Like we want our own tyrannical government. I think that's what they really yeah. wanted. And the book kind of goes into that a little bit too with the, the Hamiltonians. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. before angry letter from Michael Malice. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> oh man. And, but yeah, there was. Yeah, um, oh, Oh, I was going to say, like, there was a lot of portions talking about something that, that I've been really kind of railing against. I think that was, like, one of the big things that, I, that I've been against. Like, one, but I didn't realize what it was. One was, you know, tribalism, but the other one was, like, pretending that, like, one person's going to come in and save the day. Like, I, you know, like, right. the libertarian Jesus or the libertarian bungee Jesus that, that, uh, that Molyneux, ironically enough, uh, talks about, you know, like, <laughs> you know, that Ron Paul's going to just jump in, save the day, and then bounce out. That's never going to happen. Right. By the way, vote for Trump because he's going to make that happen. Um, and I, I, I've always been kind of against that. Like, no, you should, you should be getting ideas from people, discarding what you don't like about those ideas and then have a conversation and not just lockstep. Like everybody needs to be like this kind of libertarian. And if you disagree with me, you're not a true libertarian trademark, uh, <laughs> tired of that stuff. And I've always been kind of against that. It's like, no, no, no. Like everybody has like good ideas. Like even Molyneux has had some good ideas. You just can't, you know, uh, discount all of, every, you know, like, you just can't take something that's good and then go, oh, I like, you know, the, what is it, the end of statism series that he had that was really good. And then you go like, okay, yeah. now I'm going to believe everything else that he's saying, take in UPB and defooing and relationship. What is it with that book? Relationship, his relationship uh. book. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Take what you like, <laughs> rationalize everything else, <laughs> and, you know, have a discussion with it. You know, you don't have to... <laughs> You don't have to, like, agree with everything Rothbard ever said and did. I certainly don't. Right. Yeah. I started several times. I started writing an article titled, Rothbard Was Wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and each time I start, I, I get, you know, like, probably five, 600 words into it. And, then I, and, I, and I ask myself, do I really feel like getting in, like, a three, four-month endless fight with, you know, with every libertarian on the Internet? And then I just junk the file, not because I'm afraid of it, but it's just not worth the pain, yeah. you know. But there are things he was wrong about, and there are things Mises was wrong about. I made the mistake of saying that to uh, uh, Lou Rockwell one time. Yeah, uh, I was in a, <laughs> I was in a discussion with he and his sister, and his sister said, "But didn't Mises say blah blah blah?" Mm. And I was like, "Yeah, he was wrong. Sometimes Mises was wrong." And it was like, "Oh man, that was a mistake." <laughs> Like, yeah, and then she, she tried to get everybody to shame you. Then everyone's like, yeah. well, Mises was often wrong. I mean, like, he was for the draft. Yeah. Yeah. He was a statist. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't an anarchist at all. There, nobody's perfect. Everybody said, I, you can go and find things that I said that was really dumb. I'm sure I can go and find things that you said that were pretty dumb. Like, every, we're all humans. Yeah. We're all, we all error. We all say things that we later regret. We all say things that are wrong. Hillary's going to be president. <laughs> you know, we, we all made that mistake before. You know, you don't constantly, eh, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's really strange because of all groups of people, liberty-minded and libertarian-minded people, above all others, should recognize not to take a human being and place them up on a pedestal and pretend like they're somehow better than everybody else and we can't question their words and we can't, you know, we can't just point out, look, the guy is in a parking lot being really strange and I don't want to be associated with that, you know, and, and somehow that's evil for me to say that, that I don't want to, you know, I, yeah. I, the last thing I want to do is is be in a Kmart parking lot and look over and see, oh man, <laughs> Macy Dunn pissed him off again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm bearing the lead. On Sacred that cows yeah. make the best hamburgers. Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> they really do. Yeah, just the, the great man theory, like that's it. Every and it's it's something that everybody falls into. It's not just libertarians, but libertarian libertarians of all people should not try to fall for that because 
we always kind of look down on that. Like, why would you look up to a king all the time? Oh, Mom, right. how dare you question him? Oh, Rothbard, never <laughs> question Rothbard. It's, well, these two people, uh, people who, who will do that will say, you know, you can't question Molyneux, you can't question Rothbard. They're usually the same people. But then you point out, like, <laughs> these people had very different, like, opinions on ethics and strategy. Right, maybe not right. anymore. But, you know, they had very different opinions <laughs> on strategy. Like, how could you say that one, you know, I can't, can't question either one of them, but they're constant, like, they're, there's lots of contradictions between the two. You, you can't have both. So which one's wrong? Right. Yeah. Uh well, that's kind of the the worship of uh, Ron Paul is like that. Mm -hmm. You you had better not point out that Ron Paul actually loves the southern border and has said that he would put troops on it. Mm -hmm. That's considering that a good portion of that southern border is private property. Yeah. Well, that kind of is directly opposite of libertarian thought, and you know, I don't I don't see how you can do that and remain within the context of the non-aggression principle. Yep. But if you say that publicly, you better prepare for a good hard spanking. <laughs> yeah, what was it? The uh, president of the Libertarian Party got got into a kerfuffle <laughs> because of. I think it was that actual issue. It was his stance on immigration that uh, Nick disagreed with. Nick Swarkin, I think that's his name. Yeah, he had he had a disagreement <laughs> with him, and everybody was like, "How dare you disagree with the great man himself?" <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hey. What great man back up <laughs> like Ron Paul has done some wonderful things. I am not discounting that, but you just can't pretend that he's Jesus. <laughs> you just can't right. do it. Yeah. There was only one Jesus that you can't, you know, or whatever your prophet is. There's only one of them. <laughs> and you, you and he lives in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me be praised. Um <laughs> Yeah, it, it, just, it just has always annoyed me. And I was one of the first people to kind of start. And, you know, I, I had actually fell into the kind of the Molyneux thing for a little bit. And uh, one of our co-hosts, um, Tassas, and, uh, oh, I was just talking about this the other day. Oh, you. Yeah, you were like one of the first people I heard like kind of rumblings from, oh, yeah, Molyneux may not be the, you know, the best person. I was like, that's kind of an interesting perspective. And then it was people like. <laughs> It was a fellow YouTuber named Eagle Eye, and then Matt Pritchard, one of the uh, allegedly a co-host, get back on the program, buddy, uh, <laughs> um, who, who were kind of like, no, this is, this is some of the things that Molyneux has said that are really fucking stupid. You know, pardon my French, but really stupid. Like, <laughs> and it was like, it was that, those kind of things. And then when I started going like, okay, well, now, when I, now that I, I understand that the, you, you can be a libertarian and disagree with other libertarians, once I finally kind of broke that took that red pill, so to speak. Then I started like evaluating every single libertarian that I started listening to. And I started going like, man, all of these guys are just hucksters and horrible people. <laughs> like there's like a handful <laughs> of good ones. And I dropped out of a lot of podcasts and you were, you were one of the podcasts that I stopped listening to. And it wasn't because I thought you were a scam. It was just like 99% of the other podcasts that I was listening to. I was kind of like done with. And then it was just kind of yeah. like, well, if I'm done with all these, there's no point of me having a podcatcher and not and listening to anything else. So, which, you know, I kind of regret it because now I'm having to play catch up over like three years of content. <laughs> but yeah. With Molyneux, you know, I had done what most people do. I had seen the uh, um, the one video where uh, uh, I can't the 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 cover photo is the one is the one from um, the the from the wall from uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall, yeah. where the meat grinder, the guy who's grinding the the children. <laughs> so I'd seen that, and I'd seen a couple other things um, of his, but I hadn't, you know, like I never liked to listen to his show because to me, it's incredibly boring having just sitting there listening to somebody whine to him and him give them, you know, pseudo therapy, oh, yeah. whatever it is that he does. The Colin shows and so I didn't, through. yeah. Yeah. So I didn't really know a lot about him other than that the, the, the famous things that he'd done, the couple of videos and things on, on, and that all seemed pretty good. Uh, and then I met him at Pork Fest, and we talked for about an hour, and I came away with that going, this guy's a creep. He is an out, just like your skin crawls mm -hmm. if you're around him very much. And the same way with um, uh, Kokesh, like I really didn't pay that much attention to Kokesh. I knew he had danced at, uh, you know, at the Jefferson Memorial, and I knew Eddie Free, and he's a good guy. Um and I knew that he had tried to take credit for that when that was Eddie's idea. 
but I didn't know a whole lot about Kokesh. I'd seen a couple of his videos where he, you know, basically made fun of people on the street who didn't know the, the issues involved. Um, but then uh, he was again at Pork Fest. So this is this is a good thing about Pork Fest. You get to meet people and find out what creeps they are. And and, uh, and I didn't even really meet Kokesh at Pork Fest, but he was camped like two spaces down from me, so I could just. I'm sitting outside on the lawn chair and I'm watching him and I'm watching him interact with his dog. And I thought, man, that guy is a creep. <laughs> and, you know, from then on, it was like, that he can't fool me now. Yeah. <laughs> it's not possible. I saw you with your dog. You can't fool me. I know you're a creep. Yeah. <laughs> I think he may have calmed down just a little bit because when I met him, it's like everything that I've heard about him. Like was not there. I think he was probably going through a lot of stuff when he, because it was like he he had shown up and then there was rumblings like, oh him and Macy broke up and like a bunch of people left his farm and he's like really sad and so I, I think that's kind of what what may have calmed him down when I met him. So I kind of like I had like a really different interpretation of him. Like it was really positive, and then it was like mm. immediately afterward like er, er, like the rumblings started going like oh no he was really like shitty to her <laughs> so stuff. And it was like. <laughs> Man, I had a perfect opportunity to, to to say something, but I I did get to show him the flag that I made of him that said you know that he doesn't pay, that made fun of him for not paying Derek uh, Derek J Freeman <laughs> for the work that he did, and he laughed at it. So uh, that that should have been a flag for me, but I didn't notice it. Oh well. So I had fun to jack that. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. These people are are really highly skilled professionals at mm -hmm. showing one face to to people and showing a different face to somebody else, and you know they're skilled at it. They've they've honed it their whole lives. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you know, I just got a comment this morning from a video that I did like what two years ago about Jeff Berwick's Berwick's. Someone commented about that too. <laughs> I've been saying his name wrong. <laughs> Uh, Jeff Berwick's uh, passport alleged scam. Where's my? I just had it up. <laughs> His alleged passport scam. Um, yeah, and uh, uh, here we go. Allegedly. And <laughs> a scam. And it was like you know, like oh, th this is a BS video. And it's it's usually like people that defend all these con artists. N most of the time, they don't have an argument. They don't. They just. But if you make a non-argument, they're they're quick to point out like that's not an argument. But it's like, okay. And you'll go and like see them on other videos saying like that's not an argument. That's not an argument. And then they'll make a non-argument. And then you're like, well, I wasn't trying to make an argument. I'm like, yeah, but isn't that the whole point? <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be making an argument if you disagree with something, right? <laughs> but anyways, yeah. The, no. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, a lot of these people just make me sick, and it, it's it's unfortunate. And, and I said um, with the, the last one I did with Jeremy, you know, if if you're looking to scam people, the Liberty community is like where it's at because none of them will call the cops on you, and it's it's sad. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's uh. It's that's kind of a, a thing uh, in several cultures, uh, in several North American cultures, where um, either because of criminal activity they can't call the cops, so go rob them. You know that uh, there, there was a thing in uh, was it uh, I can't remember if it's in Breaking Bad or in um, the new what's the new one Better Call Saul, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the guys actually says that who's he going to tell the cops, <laughs> and then in in Better Call Saul, there's an idiot who is involved in criminal drug p trafficking, and he gets ripped off, and he's so stupid he calls the cops, and yeah. it almost ended up getting him caught, you know. <laughs> yeah. And and so that is who you rip off. <laughs> yeah. Funny story. I should just just quick diversion. Like I had a I had a friend who bought weed from some other idiot. And uh, he he tried to rip him off, and so he went into his room, he went into his house, and he didn't expect him to come in because he's like friends with with the other people that lived in the house. So they just let him in and go, go ahead, go ahead, punch him. That's fine. He deserves it. And he goes in there and he punches him in the <laughs> face, and he was like, "What is he gonna do? Like call the cops?" Ten minutes later, <laughs> cop car rolls up to the house. Like he actually called the cops. What an idiot! <laughs> and the cop was like, "This has something to do with drugs, doesn't it?" And he was like. <laughs> Don't ever talk to this guy again. <laughs> Just leaves. <laughs> oh man. Uh, sorry. We go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> yeah, but you're right. That's that's the liberty movement. They 
they largely don't believe. And for some reason, like they frown on if if you did get ripped off by somebody, they frown on people pointing that out. Mm -hmm. And yet, don't you people claim that shunning would work in a stateless mm -hmm. society? And yet, you won't shun anybody, no matter what horrible things that they've done. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yep. <laughs> Yep, that's why I'm always kind of, anytime someone says, like, well, you just use ostracization. It's like, no, 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 no. There needs to be some sort of reputation arbitration firm or something, you know. Because it, it just can't be, just listen to everybody talk. Because everybody wants to defend everybody who is on the ideological, it's tribalism. People always defend people in their tribes. You know, I'm I'm right. I'm a very anti-tribal person. So, I, I like, if, if you're in my quote-unquote tribe and you're doing something that's really bad, I'm going to call you out before I call the Marxists out because I think that it's more important to not have someone who's upsetting my own apple cart <laughs> rather than someone you know attacking it from the outside, you know, because we're all yeah. kind of ready for people attacking from the outside. It's people attacking from the thin side. That's the really dangerous stuff. And so when people like Berwick, Molyneux, um, you know, Kokesh to a lesser degree, I, don't, I wouldn't say that he's so much of a scammer as much as Berwick or um, – Tony Styles, <laughs> but right, yeah, right. Um, but you know, like these people. We're talking professional con men there, right? Yeah, yeah. Those people are well, allegedly. T Tony is really bad at it, <laughs> <laughs> <But>, um, <laughs> yeah. Like you know, like these people should be outed and called out on, and people, and but people still go like, you know, what's your proof? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> what do you mean? What's my proof? I just. I'm asking him for proof and he won't give it to me. He's running a charity. He's not disclosing his financials. Like that's what it, all charities should be doing. It's going like, here's what we spent on airplane tickets. Here's what we did to to save, you know, sex trafficking. He just shuts down his account as soon as he gets questioned. <laughs> you know, like, come on, man. What what red flags do you need, you know? And, uh. Yep. And people who end up knowing that figuring out that it's a scam usually don't like to talk about it, especially if they were kind of involved in the scam, like Julie Borowski. I pointed out to her, like, look, this is a scam. Don't be sharing this. And she was like, what's your proof? And I showed her radio silence. Like, it seemed like I had convinced her that, she, that I was right. I followed up like a few months later, like, I still can't get financials. What's going on? Nothing. I asked her again like a year later, and she was like, I had nothing to do with it. Like, besides sharing it on your Facebook and <laughs> your, your Twitter and – Getting all these people to, to contribute to the scam. People are out like five, like, you know, like thousands of dollars. We don't know. Like, we don't know how much money they raised, but the website's down. Tony Styles is not giving financials. He's taking a break from social media. And Alicia Dorn is threatening <laughs> lawsuits anybody who, of anybody who asks even the simplest question about where the money went. You know, it's come on, man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is ridiculous. And no one wants to say are you familiar with them? Are you familiar with the scam of the Mulligan Mint? Mm-mm. Oh yeah, I, a little bit. Rob Gray. Tell yeah, me, that's, tell me that was it. like. Um, so they set up. So these these brothers, uh, Rob, I can't remember the other brother's name, uh, Gray, and um, they set up this fake mint, and um, and they also set up a a fake bank called the Lakota something or other, and um, their idea with Ooh. the Lakota, this Lakota thing, and I think it still exists. Um, yeah, they even got, uh, what was it? Go uh, ahead. It was an actor, right? Uh, who was in yeah, last yeah. Mohicans. I think. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this, yeah, yeah I did not the, know that, that was involved in it. I did not know the Lakota thing. Go ahead. Yeah. They, they totally fooled him. He didn't, I don't think he was in on the scam part. I think they, they yeah. fooled him. He was a really nice guy. Yeah. Um, he was the, the libertarian presidential nominee in like, or maybe he was vice presidential nominee. I can't remember mm -hmm. in, I think 88 or 92 or something like that. Um, great guy, but anyway, so yeah, they would, you deposit silver, physical silver with them, or you buy silver from them and they deposit it for you. And then you can't withdraw it for like 24 months or something like that. And then you get interest when you do. Yeah. Um, and the Mulligan Mint, uh, they were getting people to, uh, to buy silver from them and they had salesmen like Kokesh was one of their, uh, people that they sponsored and, um, uh, uh, the survival podcast. And there were several of these, uh, fairly popular, uh, uh, or, or organizations that they, that they sponsored and then they got free commercials from them or not, I shouldn't say free because they were actually paying for it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and the host would often 
get lar really good payments for the advertising. And Mulligan Mint would pull in all this money and all this money. And I, I can't remember now, but I think it was well up above a million dollars mm. that vanished out of Mulligan Mint. And uh, and the guy ended up like buying a house overseas or something. And the and the government finally grabbed the the corporation and put it into bankruptcy and started dividing it up and, and looking through the books and everything. Yeah. And some of these people were like screeching support for Mulligan Mint even after the government had gone in and seized its property and everything and, and pointed out to everybody, yeah, it is a scam. You know, we're, we're looking at whether we're going to arrest this guy or not. Yeah. And there were still prominent libertarians saying, oh, no, we can't badmouth. We've got to get behind him and support him. No. It was so obvious, though, you know, yeah. they're suckers. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't go so far as to say that something. Else, I'm going to talk about something else that I would not say that this is a scam. But there was some definite dishonesty involved in this. And any time I ever brought it up, I again I would get attacked. It's like, well, I'm not saying they're a scam. I'm just saying that they're not particularly honest about how they were marketing their thing. And that was the Liberty Dollar. And and I know I'm probably you're probably like, whoa, Liberty Dollar? Yeah. <laughs> like how dare you? <laughs> But the Liberty Dollar had gone and, t and made it stressed people. You have to tell them that it's not U.S. currency. You have to do it. And, you know, th that was like one of the things that we stressed in their in their written media. But in their video media, like when they actually show people like here's how you use it. Like there was a video of um, what's his name? Uh, Vaughn. Um, oh, what's his name? yeah. B Bernard. Vaughn yeah, I always something. mispronounce it. Yeah, yeah, I already not mispronounce house. it even when I'm reading it. Bernard yeah, von Nothaus. Not yeah. There was a video of it is a promotional thing that was produced by the thing. He 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 walks up to a vendor and and buys like some sort of food item or a t-shirt, I can't remember, and he goes like like um, you know, like you know, I have some some money, but I also have like these new silver pieces. And, you know, and it, the, the he, but he never mentioned, like, by the way, this is just, you know, a piece of silver. It's not U.S. currency. She, and it had the, you know, the dollar thing on it. He just like, hey, we have a new silver piece. And if you tell people that it's a new silver piece, my first reaction is going to be like, oh, this is this is like currency. Not. Right. Yeah. And it was. And, and because of that, I was Clear, clearly yeah. deception. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, he may not have thought about it. I, it seems as though like he was just kind of just like, oh, yeah, I'm just so used to using these things now. He just kind of got careless. But, yeah. you know, that was one of the th I guarantee you that was one of the things that the government looked at and said, like, no, you can't do that because <laughs> that, that is technically <laughs> fraud. <laughs> you know, like say what you want about the government. It's, it's, it's pretty fraudy. I, I, I wouldn't say that he that I, he was doing it intentionally, but it, it's kind of when I saw it, I was just like, oh, that's not good. Yeah. 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 But people were like, you can't you can't question Bond not house and the Liberty Dollar sacrosanct, you know. <laughs> like, yes, I can. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, I can. Don't tell me what to do, status. <laughs> but Ron Paul. Mm hmm. <laughs> He did the Ron Paul dollar, which I have, which is probably worth a lot of money right now because I have the really <laughs> rare one. But, yeah, uh, you want to talk about Vermin Supreme because uh, we were talking about oh, Vermin yeah. Supreme. Yeah. And the pie. Yeah, uh, you guys, you and uh, and Jim uh, Bab, that's, that is pure genius. Vermin <laughs> Supreme puts out a, a, a bounty on this dude, a pie bounty on whoever I can't remember the 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 uh, uh, the white supremacist was it eugenicist. Spencer? No, no, uh, 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 no. It was uh, Victus uh, Saul and Victus. Yeah, Saul and Victus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Saul. Yeah, um, and that's just that's beauty. That's yeah. just it's it is art. It is so perfect. It is art at its highest. This yeah. should be like there should be a museum just for Vermin Supreme, <laughs> where he just stands there with his boot on his head and a pie in his hand. Yeah. It's just, it ah, uh, poetry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have an extra book of copy of your book. If someone gives a pie in Saul Victor's face, not only can they take Vermin's <laughs> offering, I'll be glad to send them a book copy of your book as well. <laughs> I'll provide my own bounty. How about that? And you can quote me on that. Let, <laughs> let let me know if someone else did it too, in case they don't know about it. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, it you know it's, I, it's things like that that are really going to like make an impact more than 
hey, let's do another uh, lecture session about you know economic calculation problem on YouTube again, <laughs> along with eight thousand other ones. <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, man. Yeah, those things are important, but there's they already exist. There's it's a it's a well tread topic. Yeah. Well, that's my problem with like several people have told me to write a book. You know, what you really need to do is write a book, at least at least do an e version of a book and or at least, you know, like take a bunch of your podcasts and reformulate them into like a book form and do that. And I every time I would politely thank the person for saying that. But I would think in my mind, like, you know, all I would be doing is regurgitating a, a, an old Rothbard book or, a, you know, I, I would just be making the same statement that everybody else has made over and over and over. And I, I wasn't going to do it. And then I got a completely different idea. And I thought, you know, there's one thing that basically nobody is doing and that's what needs to be done yeah. and so that and that motivated me to write the book well that and the fact that i was um if you recall i was the like the weekend uh fiend host um for a while and then all of a sudden my health just went right down the toilet yeah. and but i felt like i had to do something i was still i was still active and i had all these notes that i had taken so i had to do something with them so you know so that's why people should not read Sedition, Subversion, and Sabotage Field Number Field Manual Number One, a three-part solution to the state. You should not read it. But yeah. if you accidentally trip and fall into reading it, <laughs> then then you should immediately loudly proclaim what a horrible book it is and how it's not a very good. It's a parody, but it's not very good. It's not very funny, yeah. and nobody should ever read it. And then as soon as you stop falling into it, you should put it someplace where somebody else can fall into yeah. it. Yeah, so that's that's why I'm giving my copy away, and not because I think everybody should read it. No, no, no. I think I think you should really look at it and say like, "Man, this is really bad," and talk about how really bad it is, and then you know, pass it on. <laughs> and of course, the copy that I'm giving Spread away is is actually signed by you. So, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Does your audience know the uh, the saga of trying to get a book to you? <laughs> Yes, but I think it would be better if we explained it <laughs> because we're the ones that tried. Okay, so I'll, I'll kind of start with what happened with me because what happened was I wanted a copy of your book and I had some extra Bitcoin laying around. And I was like, okay, you know, Bitcoin's a little bit high. I might as well, you know, buy something with it. And I was like, oh, Ben Stone has this book. Maybe I should purchase a copy because I heard it's absolutely horrible. and <laughs> I should condemn it at that kind of level. <laughs> so I sent it an order and I was like, great, I should be getting it soon. And you sent it off, <laughs> allegedly, uh, according to the post office, allegedly. <laughs> and then I was, I, it never came. Like, it just returned to you. Now, I originally sent it to my P.O. box the first time, right? Right. Okay, so I sent it to my P.O. box, and it got returned to you, and it said, what did it say? Um, oh, I can't remember the exact words, but uh, it took two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they first they showed, you know, because you can track it. Uh, we had the tracking number and they showed that it got all the way to the Vegas uh, post office and was in the Vegas post office where it's the actual building where your post office right, box yeah. is. And then they said, uh, like, what did they say? I think it was something it was, to do with, um, the, with the zip code was wrong. And it's like, oh, well, it's, oh, okay, it's yeah. at the building. It doesn't matter if the zip code is wrong. <laughs> And it wasn't wrong because you sent me a picture. Uh, no, no, you actually sent it to me later. And I have it. I still have it. Uh, or the, the yeah. New, yeah. And you know, the zip code was not wrong, but they sent it back because the zip code was wrong. And they didn't open it, though. But they did open up everybody else's. Right. Or, yeah. Okay. They, they opened a lot of them. They opened a yeah. lot of them. Uh, and and I had to pay the, the mail person brought it up to my house and I had to pay. To the same amount that I paid to ship it, I had to pay that amount to get it back from them. What? Otherwise, they were going to shred it. Yeah. So I did not hear that. Uh, which part. it's not much. <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't much. It's like three dollars yeah. for shipping or something. So I'm I'm scrambling around looking for change, you know, to to hand them three dollars because he does the mail guy doesn't carry change for a twenty or whatever, yeah. you know. So so I buy it back from him, and uh, um, and we tried shipping it again. And the second time, or no, 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 it, was it wasn't that. It was this time. 
Yeah, during that two-week gap where we had no idea what had happened to it, we went ahead and shipped another one. Mm -hmm. so, so there was a second package. And that one was supposed to go right to Jim's house. <laughs> and they, we tracked it, and they said it was delivered. And they said the date that it was delivered and everything. Yeah. And Jim goes out, looks in his mailbox. He's like, it's not here. Not, it's not, not here. Not only did I go and look at my mailbox, because normally they, the, if it won't fit, and I imagine it probably wouldn't have. If it didn't fit in my mailbox, they come and deliver it to my front door. So I was like, okay, I'll go and I'll check in front of everyone's door. You know, and I went up and up and down the entire apartment complex. Like it was immediately after it was, I got the notification that it was delivered, and I was like, "Okay." And I went outside; it wasn't there, and I was like, "Oh no!" Let me see if they delivered to the wrong house. So I went up and down, nothing, nothing, nothing. So it may have like ended up on someone's poor. Uh, you know, someone knocked on the door, and they just was like, "Oh, okay," and they looked at it and was like, "Oh, this is wrong," and they sent it out the next day. I don't know, but I went through all the apartments and looked at all the floors, and it was not there. And then I even. <laughs> The next day, I even went to the uh, the guy, and I was like, you didn't send it off in a package. And he was like, oh, I wasn't here that day. I don't know. And, and while he had all the doors open <laughs> to the back of the things, I was looking in all of them, just making sure there wasn't a package in there that kind of looked like the first one you sent. And I was like, okay, uh, whatever. It wasn't in there. And then you got that one back, too. <laughs> like, just magically I, I got one that day. one back. Yeah. And it had been torn open. And... Uh, um, I can't remember what excuse was written on it, but they didn't charge me when they returned that one to me. So there's a lack of consistency in their in their return policy. <laughs> so so the third attempt, we just went down to UPS, mm -hmm. like bypass them completely. We went to UPS, pack it, let let UPS package it, let UPS handle it, goes right to to Jim's house, no problems, no issues, gets there in like a couple of days, bingo, problem solved. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there there was a similar thing with the book. Um, I tried shipping one to Canada, and it was opened, and it took oh, I think it was like, I think it was over a month it took to get there, and then we shipped another one to Canada, and it bounced around from address to a, they tried to deliver it to like three different addresses, and finally shipped it back to us, and then so I started trying to search to figure out to tell this person that that you know that what had happened why they didn't get their book and i found out that the person it was addressed to was some tv personality some news personality in canada <laughs> so, so i'm like wait a minute maybe this was just a joke maybe somebody was sending him that book as a joke mm. you know um and then at this around the same time a guy with a dhs.gov email address attempted to order a book <laughs> and and I just sent him a note that said nah not gonna happen buddy and canceled his <laughs> order and sent his money back it's like no 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 this would violate the terms of the yeah. agreement the the uh, BIPCOT. uh BIPCOT no government yeah I would be violating the terms of my own agreement so no not gonna happen dude sorry yeah <laughs> Yeah, but I I didn't I didn't funny, get a funny, copy. Funny. So, and here's what happened. So when when I first didn't get it, uh, one of the people who goes to the, uh, uh, what is it the, uh, the 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 Liberty on the Rocks here in Vegas, uh, came over and he was like, I'll just lend you a copy of my book. I was like, No, damn it! I'm gonna get my own copy of the book. <laughs> By hell or high water, I will get that book and I will read it. <laughs> and then like. <laughs> So I didn't get that one. And then Michael was like, I'll just send you mine. I already read it, and I'm already condemning it publicly. And I was like, all right, I'll take it since, you don't, <laughs> since you're not going to use it. So I have a copy from him, and it's got your message to him. Also a message to me <laughs> saying that he public – and he wrote in there, like, I publicly condemn this book, MWD. <laughs> so I have that copy. I have the, the, the second copy that you sent me. And then I have the original copy you sent me when you – uh, sold me your Zoom H2 because <laughs> then you sent it to me yeah. and I was like, oh, that's right. I never got the original one. <laughs> and I, you were like, yeah, next time I'm in town, I'll probably just drop it off because that's like it's the only way I'm going to get it to you unless I UPS it, which is too, too much. <laughs> so I was like, awesome. I finally got it. And I have it. I'm not even going to open it up. <laughs> well, I read the, the little hit, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the the thing you wrote in there, but I was like, that's my virgin copy. <laughs> I'm, I'm saving it. This is this is my holy grail. I'm not giving it up. No, 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 no. <laughs> and if anybody asks from the government, like, oh, no, that's just, you know, my, my buddy just sent me, you know, it's a gift. It means a lot to me. <laughs> I have not read it. I have not read it. 
Listen to the audio book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I have it on good uh, I have it on good source that a copy of it got into a high school library in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> That's awesome. But the librarian, of course, doesn't know it's in there. <laughs> there are no numbers for people who don't have a copy. There are no numbers of any kind on the book to categorize it or put it into a library or, you know, uh, what's the, uh, the I, decimal system. there's some, yeah, any of those things. It doesn't have any, like it didn't even tell who the printer is. There, there's nothing on the book indicating oh, where or who printed it. Or something like that, ISB, yeah, or yeah. yeah. ISDN. Yeah, and it doesn't have like a barcode. It doesn't have any, so you can't get it at Amazon. It will never, ever, ever, unless somebody else. Here's what you can do: if you want to download the PDF, convert it into the right PDF format, and take it to a printer. You could get, you could print it and actually offer it to Amazon as your work. Anybody can do that yeah. and and attach their name to it. Uh, and sell it on Amazon, you could probably get 10, 12 bucks a, a, an issue, yeah. or uh, a copy, I mean. You could do it on Lulu. Lulu. Lulu will throw it on Amazon for you. And Lulu, you can also yeah. do like, oh, you want you want a hard your hard cover and all that stuff. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a money, we're offering a money-making opportunity for mm -hmm. anybody who wants it. <laughs> for, any, for anybody who wants to print a, a very condemnable, but very very entertaining book, especially if you listen to Travis's interpretation, <laughs> very good. He, he does put uh, he he does uh, he dramatizes it. Yeah, that, I think that's what. Uh... Anytime there's a quote <laughs> in there, he, he gives it kind of like a. <laughs> kind of, it's great, even when it's not it, like deserving of that. <laughs> yeah. Is he the one that did the final little mm -hmm. short story at the end? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he gave one of the guys an English accent. I, I was a little shocked by that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very memeable person for sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, you should probably should wrap this up. Do uh, you want to plug anything you know, besides the book and the Room for Freedom? Twitter, whatever. Uh, yeah, room for freedom. Room the number four freedom dot com. Um, we're not accepting any donations, but anybody who's a programmer and wants to jump on board, there's a place there you can write a note to us. Uh, we do have a Twitter and a um, Facebook page. Jeremy runs the Facebook page, and he's been a bit busy lately, so he may not answer you immediately if you try to communicate with him on on the Facebook page. Getting, and I don't blame Jeremy. Yeah, he's getting attacked. He's getting attacked by the right wing snowflakes who dare who, who dared say something yeah. wrong, like they didn't agree with. Yeah, just, you harmed me with your words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just did a video this morning about like like I'm so tired of hearing like oh the left gets so offended by words. Ha ha ha. It's like. Oh, just go tell someone. Go tell one of these people that you're gonna go burn a flag. Don't actually do it. Just tell them that you want to do it and watch the hate and vitriol, and tell them how they weren't, they're gonna burn your house while your while your family is inside of it. Yeah, and then tell yeah. me that these people aren't snowflakes too. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure because I think I've heard you use the the comparison to the horseshoe. Of the mm -hmm. two political spectrums, yeah, um, and I'm not sure, but what it's a round horseshoe. I'm I'm not sure, but what there's an actual connection where you can just fall from one from the left to the right <laughs> just by stepping across a, a magic line of uh, you know of, of particles or something. Yeah, the the idea is that the centrist position is further away from the very far spectrums of both than and then the yeah. the far ends of the spectrums are actually closer. Than, than they are to the centrist position. That's kind of the theory of it. So the extremely far, far left is more identical to the extremely far, far right, and they're closer together than someone who's just like a moderate, you know, or a centrist right. or whatever you want to call them. Yeah, that's kind of the idea. And, it's, and it goes with pretty much everything. Feminism, politics, you know, any, anytime there's an extreme position, chances are, you know, they're going to be closer together than, you know, the yeah. more moderate position, so... This problems with yep. it, but it's it's a good kind of rule of thumb that I've noticed works. It's pretty apt, and their methodology is definitely the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, room for freedom. What's at what's yep. Twitter again? Uh, bad. Bad Quaker. Oh, uh, uh, 
uh, badquaker.com, room for freedom, the number four, and it's the same with Twitter, with Facebook, or with uh, dot .com. Um, and, oh, and there's a, a YouTube page as well. There was, like, I think there was three videos up, but two of them contained false information that I had recorded not knowingly, so I took those two down, and there's uh, just the one. There's, like, a, I think it's, like, a 60-second ad uh, on YouTube, so it's clean. I checked it. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll throw that in the very beginning, I guess. <laughs> Download it. <laughs> but you already heard it, so who really cares? <laughs> All right, thank you, Ben. Yeah. It's great talking to you again. It's been a long time, and if you want to do this again, let me know. I'm, I'm sure everybody would love it. <laughs> Everyone's going to love this one. So. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, man. Um, yeah, no problem. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, right, anytime. <laughs> Worms. Worms. That could be our word, too. Room for Freedom, the website and app that will connect freedom-minded travelers with freedom-minded hosts or clients and merchants, if you prefer. Room for Freedom won't act as a middleman in your transactions. We'll simply provide an encrypted app that will allow one person to connect with another without a paper trail. We'll have a rating system so you can feel more comfortable transacting, but we won't record the transaction. Some companies offer low prices, and then they sell your private information to their partners, whatever that means. And they're more than happy to hand your private information over to any government that asks for it. You just can't trust people like that. We at Room for Freedom think private transactions should be just that, private. So if you prefer to travel without having a giant company record your movements and your purchases, or if you have a room or whatever, but don't want snooping eyes peeking into your business, we have what you're looking for. Go to Room for Freedom to learn more. That's room, the number four, freedom.com.